Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar, How They Did It, McKesson's Transformation Story. I'm joined today by one of our most valued customers, McKesson, who will be talking us through their journey they followed as they transformed their IT and the role that Public Cloud played in that approach. I wanted to just call out that um, this is a webinar is actually part of a three-part series called Crossing the IT Transformation Chasm. Other two in the series are called Why IT Transformation Fails and Fighting the Best IT Transformation Path. This one today will be the third and last webinar in the series. Um, just as a reminder, uh, if you want to uh, ask any questions during our webinar today, uh, there is a chat box in your window that you can um, ask questions. We will try to uh, get to these questions either through the webinar today or we will address them at the end during our Q&A session. So just to introduce myself, um, I am Duan van der Vestezen. I am the general manager of our fanatical support for Azure practice here at Rackspace. And we look after customers who'd like to transform and uh, optimize their Azure environments um, on Microsoft Azure. We provide managed services on a global scale. I'm joined today by Vijay Thuma from McKesson and Marty Stanton from Rackspace. Uh, Vijay, do you want to introduce yourself and maybe talk a little bit about your background and context? Yeah, sure, Duane. Um, uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate the intro. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm, uh, I'm Vijay Thuma, Director of Cloud Services, uh, um, focusing on operations. Uh, I'm part of the Cloud Transformation team from McKesson, uh, where we have embarked on this cloud journey over the last couple of years, uh, you know, focusing especially on moving some of our private cloud uh, footprint and uh, um, you know, uh, accelerating into public cloud. Um, right now, we're you know very Azure focused. Uh, having said that, over the last uh, year and a half, for uh, probably about a little bit over a year, I've been partnering with uh, you know Rackspace in our journey to public cloud. Great, thanks, DJ. Uh, we're also joined by Marty Stanton from Rackspace. Marty, we'll let you introduce yourself here. Yeah, hello. Thanks, Juan. Uh, yeah, my name is Marty Stanton. I'm the Global Account Executive at Rackspace, and I work with a number of our largest customers uh, that utilize Microsoft Azure Cloud uh, services, and just really glad to join you guys today and, and have the conversation. Thanks, Juan. Perfect. Thanks, guys. So just to kick us off, uh, Vijay, I thought, you know, I, I know McKesson is a really big company, and most of the folks on this webinar probably know it, but um, it would be helpful if you can maybe give us some context, and just in the background of McKesson, um, and just you know the IT structure and the organization inside McKesson, your role in that. Absolutely. Um, thank you. Um, as you know, I don't know how many you know, how many of you are aware or at least uh, you know familiar with the uh, name McKesson. Uh, McKesson is uh, the largest and the oldest uh, you know healthcare company uh, in U.S. It is a Fortune 5 company, you know, currently serving more than 50% of you know U.S. hospitals and 20 uh, 20% of physicians. Um, you know, the company uh, delivers you know pharma and distribution and to almost like you know one third of the medications that are covered uh, currently covered in North America. Uh, we have operations that are spread across uh, I think 16 countries, um, uh, and uh, McKesson. Everything you know is, is almost like a holding company. You can say this, where uh, it's formed by multiple business units that are product-oriented, uh, several business lines of service. I am part of the enterprise technology services that focuses on the technology. Um, everything that we do for these business units uh, flows through the enterprise technology services. I work uh, as part of this ETS group, uh, working with internal customers to help them get familiarized with the opportunities of the cloud, you know, how we can modernize some of their applications, the cloud transformation, you know, um, uh, transformation and automation, modernization, you know, to improve the efficiency, resiliency, performance, and agility of their on-prem IT technologies as well as uh, the cloud concepts and methodologies. So um, in a nutshell, you know, McKesson has started looking this very seriously from, you know, moving to our private cloud to our, our public cloud. Um, and as we are embarked on this path, um, you know, we have partnered with Rackspace uh, to manage our uh, cloud platforms. Thank Great. You. Thanks for that introduction, uh, Vijay. So let's dive into the discussion a little bit deeper. So um, we're going to start off right at the top. You know, let's 
let's talk a little bit about the history of where you started, where IT was, um, some of the change you had to go through on your path to public cloud, and, and just some of the challenges um, you faced along the way. Uh, I was thinking maybe we start off with your, you know, your data centers and consolidation of that project, and then maybe take it from there and talk us through the, the steps that you followed as you decided to commit on public cloud as your end goal. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, about three to four years ago, um, you know, we want, we embarked on a path where we stood up our own private cloud. Um, you know, trying to move from a traditional way of hosting things to you know a centralized way of you know hosting it internally um, because of some you know regulatory compliances that we have had uh, that we had to adhere to them. Um, so, and then as part of that, we you know we spin up about you know we had multiple data centers. I think you know the, the number was more than you know perhaps 20 plus. We, we started with the consolidation of these data centers, right, you know, to centralize and even minimize our costs of maintenance. Um, uh, having said that, uh, within a year and a half or so, we consolidated that to about two major data centers, one on the East Coast and one on the West Coast. Um, and um, fair enough, you know, we had uh, people that embraced uh, the private cloud, you know, started growing. Businesses started using the platforms, uh, but we grew at an ex exponential rate. You know, where you know it was hard to, you know, being managed. The costs were going, you know, above and beyond of you know what we projected them to be. Uh, at that point, you know, we started seriously looking at some of the public cloud capabilities. We do want to also transform ourselves into a much more focused technology company rather than you know a healthcare company. So we had the opportunity, uh, we also had the opportunity to move. We also wanted to move from a CAPEX to an APEX model. So with, you know, multiple levels of sophistication and complexity that has come into the business units, um, we made the leap to public cloud, um, you know, engaging Rackspace as our partner. Um, we knew, you know, the scaling would not be that easy, right? You know, always whenever you're uh, looking at a growth perspective, it creates multiple challenges. Um, you know, there's always a pushback from the people. Um, you know, why are we doing this? You know, um, why are we, I mean, you know, building a cloud environment, working with, uh, you know, multiple, you know, cloud providers, having, bringing a managed service provider, um, you know, preparing the business for sort of agility, you know, um, and maintaining the current business operations. All of the, all these ones, you know, we get to kind of uh, uh, take into consideration into our defining our strategies, creating our plans, assessing the business need, you know, building the outcomes based on, you know, cloud concepts and technologies. Uh, so these are some of the things we, we had to take into consideration um, you know, to move um, and to embark on our path uh, from transformation of private to public cloud. Um, so we started on this path um, about, about a year and a half ago, um, you know, started looking at, um, you know, transforming people, process, and cultural changes, right? Uh, we had our own set of challenges. We wanted to move into, uh, you know, um, into the public cloud, leveraging the, 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 uh, having the flexibility uh, to grow our business in a fluctuating bandwidth demands, you know, that would increase our scale up capability to cloud capacity. Um, you know, businesses, you know, where all sizes can be part of that global uh, disaster recovery, um, and also um, be free of capital expenditure, you know, have those automatic software updates that we talk about, you know, should be able to work from anywhere, document controlling, security, competitiveness, all these kind of things. So these were some of our public cloud considerations uh, where we, you know, partnered with uh, Rackspace and, um, and, and we, you know, kind of, uh, you know, started this journey in two stages, you know, um, you know, from private to from legacy data centers to private and private to public cloud. And today, partnering with Rackspace, uh, we can um, very proudly say that we've been able to accomplish this transformation to a great extent. Thanks, Vijay. Just, just a quick one on the private to, to public stepping stone. 
Are there any learnings that you think you, you guys got out of private cloud doing that transition that helped you towards your stepping stone to public cloud? What are some of the what are some of the benefits you received during that transition? And and do you do you feel like this is a good path for other companies that are on this webinar to maybe follow? Yeah, I mean, it was not an easy journey, uh, Dwayne. I'm honestly speaking that we, we had multiple challenges, you know, when we came into this. You know, we had to transform the people. Uh, the process was a little bit different. We had to bring in a lot of cultural changes, a lot of retooling of skill sets. Um, we were we were a traditional, um, let's say, you know, waterfall model. Uh, we wanted to we kind of um, uh, adopted the agile technology. Uh, there's a lot of ongoing education for transformation that we, we need to bring in. Uh, we had to disrupt some of the businesses, you know, which was the toughest part to do. Um, again, you know, our, our, our cloud strategy and readiness, you know, was based on multiple factors. You know, you know we, we went back, looked at our specialist uh, and rack space, you know, who could advise us beyond the technical, you know, enabling our teams to see, you know, what are the solutions out there. Um, with with multiple lenses, right? You know, there's there's a finance lens that you have to see three things. There's a risk, you know, of marketing, you know, the capital, you know, procurement, you name it. I mean, there's multiple things. Uh, and and but the end of the day, we were looking at the capabilities that we can bring in, right? You know, business model disruption. You know, how do you you know build this business cloud strategy and business case readiness assessment preparation. You know, process and optimization. Um, so over a period of time, we were able to overcome all these, um, and you know, fair enough. You know, you know, different application assessments at multiple stages, at different stages of cloud readiness, we were able to automate, uh, you know, and modernize, and upgrade and support the services to the full extent. Okay, I'm just thinking about your business outcomes before you started on this journey. Do you feel like you had a a clear set of uh, success KPIs, or, or was it more of an iterative approach to prove out the model as you as you work towards the end state of of transforming the IoT to public cloud? Yeah, uh, the KPIs, you know, for sure, um, you know, play a major role, right? You know, there's key performance uh, in indicators as to how you want to measure yourself. TCO ROI analysis is important. At, at the same time, the scalability. Um, the agility, the fast pace, and you know, also bringing uh, a modern architecture, a modernization of applications. Those are some of the, um, the things we looked at to improve our efficiency, our resiliency, our performance, our agility, um, and then you know, tie them back to you know how we're doing that with an on-prem IT technologies and staff versus you know what happens in the public cloud. Okay. So you know, as you kind of committed to this this decision to move to public cloud, and, and as as your leadership got on board, um, it must have been difficult to drive this change throughout your organization. Can you maybe talk a little bit about how how you overcame these challenges and some of the some of the goals you had and 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 the the path you took? I think there's there's probably a lot of learnings that that people can can learn from your company, the size of yours, that they were able to do this? Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, as I said in, in about five minutes ago, the top challenge is, you know, every time you want to disrupt your business, automate something, and modernize, uh, and, and transform your cloud, you know, you're bound to face challenges from technology, people, and process. Um, from a technology standpoint, there was multiple comp uh, there was a, uh, added complexity that we added uh, to how we're doing things in the private cloud, right? In our legacy environments, uh, where everything is a little bit different from a technology stack and cloud services pers uh, perspective. Um, the people, you know, we as I said, you know, we were trying to move them towards a more agile approach uh, because you know that's how I think you know is a key to adopting you know cloud. Uh, some existing personnel, you know, will lack some experience in consuming and operating technology as a service, right? Um, um, the leadership has to be transformed um, at, at the highest level. Um, and the operating model had to be transformed uh, because we wanted to bring a cloud-enabled, agile approach to our application and infrastructures. We want to merge them together. 
and the process, like you know, the third thing is the process. We had to adopt to different processes, um, which was more focused on you know integrating services coming from you know multiple providers, and you know engaging where well, you know a, a managed service provider you know who was not part of our uh, initial um, private cloud uh, environment, right? So we were trying to deliver a set of services that are innovative to the businesses. That's always a pushback. Um, as a result of that, um, there's always also internal pushback about you know developers not having cycles to move their applications into the cloud. Um, the, the data set lockdowns, you know, the network, uh, the security. I mean, you know, all these you know, firewall rules that you talk about, uh, the security teams where everything. I mean, you know, there's a general perception that you move to the cloud, you know, you're exposed, right? You know, and we had to change that mindset as well. And uh, okay. most importantly, we had tons of um, you know, applications, uh, north of thousands, you know, that we had to kind of uh, make them cloud agnostic, uh, make sure they run in the environment, uh, you know, which is which is a little bit different from what they were running before, dependencies, so on and so forth. Yeah, you mentioned uh, when we talked about this previously that also you, it wasn't like a mandate from IT that you had to move to cloud. A lot of the teams were, were kind of given some flexibility to uh, you know, almost self-select and say, you know, I want to use this as part of my kind of de almost department's um, IT pathway. Can you talk a little bit about how, what impact that had and if that's a, a successful approach that you would recommend for other companies going down this path? Yeah, um, I think you have to you have to strike a balance. I'm not saying you know you can mandate and be successful, vice versa. Uh, if you don't accelerate and push uh, and make the push to the public cloud, you're gonna uh, you're gonna see things where they are. And, and the reason I'm saying that is, as you know, every time a change happens, you know people people tend to think that uh, you know they're they're being questioned about you know how they've been doing things, right? You know, which is which is fundamentally a challenge to change that. Uh, there are ways to overcome that. And the overcoming that is by retooling in you know, um, their skill set and making sure that there's a balance between you know, how they're doing their work and the transformation. Um, having said that, um, I mean, over a period of time, we, we did get the uh, senior management to agree on how we were going to do it, you know. So that was a win-win for us. And the way they, we did that was we rolled it. We started rolling it from the top-down level, right? You know, where the executive levels agreed to the business value of what they're trying to do, and we we made this as part of an enterprise strategy without mandating it. So when you're talking about from a strategic perspective, when you're laying the strategy in front of our businesses on an annual basis. And we're calling them out and say, hey, here are the five things that you know, we want to accomplish this year. So the buy-in started at that point. Um, and we say it would be good if we can move an X percentage of our workloads. We showed, obviously, you know, we, sh we showed the value, business value of it by putting all the numbers together and showing you know, what the cost savings mean, what, what, you know, what is the benefit of moving from a CapEx to an OpEx model, utility consumption you know, of you know, what you're actually consuming rather than you know, having um, utility costs, you know, being uh, consumed on a 24 by 7 basis. So those are some of the value add things that we brought into the conversations, uh, even though we did not necessarily mandate. And with Rackspace, you know, coming along and helping us and guiding us um, in this um, exploration of you know how we need to roll these things out, it made it a lot more easy for us to get that internal alignment, you know, with the business units. Great stuff. Yeah, it's actually a call out in one of our previous webinars in the series that you know executive leadership is, is extremely key to the success of large projects like this. Do you feel like there was maybe a tipping point where you where executives um, were aligned on a strategy like this, or is it just the overall change that public cloud has been driving and and the, just the market forces that that companies are experiencing? Do, do you need to talk about a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I think uh, from from a internal customer perspective, um, 
you know, we were, I think everybody agreed on one thing, that, you know, we have to move our applications to cloud, right, you know? Um, and as, uh, you know, as a team of technologists, we came together to create a value proposition of cloud and communicate, you know, the impact of agility, cost, scaling, and customers, and to the customers, right? Uh, so we went about, you know, meeting with the customers directly to realign with their business. Uh, we kind of attacked this at a value stream level, you know, looking at their portfolios of applications, just to how it can meet their business outcomes, prioritizing, you know, some of the applications. Um, and we also rolled out, uh, you know, taking an iterative approach to move their apps and you know, so on and so forth. Um, so, you know, bringing that cultural shift, you know, was, was a big, I would say, a challenge. But at the end of the day, uh, moving into cloud, um, evangelizing, you know, kind of the benefits of moving to cloud, uh, and, you know, get, getting said that increased collaboration, and, you know, helped us um, to kind of accelerate uh, and, uh, and transform their business applications. Yeah, this is an approach I think I've heard from a lot of our big accounts as well, is that, you know, you start sometimes, instead of trying to, you know, boil the ocean by, by categorizing and cataloging mm -hmm. thousands of apps, um, you, you just have to start somewhere and, and be iterative about that. And as you start to prove the value and, and you get internal departments to see that the change that this can give them um, in terms of their, their own agility and impact to their business, you start to see almost like a snowball effect. So I've, I've definitely heard that before as well. Um, so you've mentioned, you know, a big part of this really is is not just the technology. In some in some cases, one would argue technology is the easy part. It's really the the people, the process, and the the cultural challenges that you may face internally that you have to overcome. Um, you had some really good examples around what what you did there. Maybe you can talk us through some of these um, that you employed in in McKesson as you went through this journey. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think, you know, you know, we had multiple challenges, you know, with the public cloud transformation. Um, the first thing is we wanted to, you know, modernize our applications. You know, that's, that's a fundamental thing. We wanted to bring in a lot of automation to the picture, right? A lot of things happening manually on our side, you know. And, and, the, and the only way we could attack this was, you know, by becoming more agile. Um, so we kind of rolled this out. I mean, I'll give you an example of, you know, how we started out. Uh, we started a cloud program, you know, about this time last year where we said we're going to roll out X number of teams, you know, uh, make them specific to cloud transformation and, and, and mark on this path. As a result of that, we started training our employees on the agile processes. We started, you know, bringing in more you know, safe methodologies, you know, which is what we employed. A training was rolled out to you know, a certain number of people in the beginning tied to those teams. Um, there was, there's obviously, you know, there's a, there's a different way of doing things. You know, people, you get, you always get a pushback, but we continue to educate them um, on an ongoing basis to let them know of the value of, you know, doing things in an agile fashion. Um, and then take that back to the businesses, engage the businesses in those agile discussions as well. So our agile teams are not comprised just of the folks that are actually doing the work, but also included our partners like Rackspace, our vendors, our business uh, owners, the business application teams, and everybody as a matter of fact. Um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, we're bringing, attacking this with the right security and the right regulatory approach. So uh, this is the transformation that we, I mean, obviously, the, as I said, you know, the, the challenges are going to be the cultural challenges, you know, where you know, developers are overcome with some of, some of the stuff. You know, it's, a, it's hard to sell this vision. Um, they, it, this could have probably impacted some of their, you know, uh, release cycles. How we had a balance between those releases and our transformation efforts. Um, and they didn't have enough cycles, basically, right, you know. And then there were some on-prem public cloud uh, dependencies as well, you know, uh, that had to push the timelines back. Um, so as I said, 
you know, going through these multiple challenges, you know, also helped us to understand in a much bigger fashion of what we need to do. I mean, so iteratively, you know, uh, we started off with this four teams, as I said, and then we expanded that, you know, to about 12 teams, and then we moved to 18 teams. So as you can see, within a year, we expanded to almost 20 teams, which means, you know, it was, it was all out there. You know, people were now, you know, embedded into the process, started seeing the value of how we're doing things, um, and then started adapting to that. Now we're in a position where we can say, you know, we're kind of, you know, rolling along pretty nicely um, with this approach and, you know, moving along, you know, in a much faster way into the public cloud. Hey, Vijay Marty here. I, I know we had this discussion uh, in the past, but I thought it would be helpful for those uh, listening in today. Is that culture about the failing fast concept? Uh, you mentioned the agile teams, but you talked about the culture of you know failing fast and moving on. Uh, that's not necessarily a concept that that most think about in IT. But talk a little bit about the failing fast approach. Yeah, as we are as we are going through these cloud transformations, um, and, you know, with an agile approach, you know, in the traditional waterfall uh, you know approach, you know, you get you only fail or you know whether you're successful or failing only when you get to a certain point. That could be X number of months from the time you actually started uh, or it could be X number of years depending on how long your program or project is. Whereas here, multiple teams focusing on multiple things with some cross-trained dependencies come together um, at the beginning of our planning and then discuss about Here's what we want to do for this. Here's the objectives that we want to achieve. Let's identify all the dependencies. Let's get a commitment from all of us that we're going to attack this iteratively. And and we we can you know having having uh, approached this in a sprint like fashion where you know every two weeks we have some chunk of business value work that we need to deliver to move things forward in an iterated fashion. Even if someone was failing, we would know within those two weeks, rather than waiting X number of months or X number of years, where people would say, "Oh, yeah, you know, I see that, you know, there's no way we're going to be successful, right?" And then adjusting ourselves, and then every time we fail, you know, we fell, and we fell, you know, and we fell forward, you know, not backwards, right? We may, I mean, and from a process standpoint or from an agility perspective, you know, we were learning as we were going along. So that's what I mean by failing fast. Is that um, excellent? That and those, yeah, yeah, totally. And, and because you're doing those two-week check-ins, you know, the the failures mm -hmm. every two weeks are small and incremental, and the whole organization can adjust appropriately versus you know that two or three-year deployment, like you mentioned, and learning then of the investment that had to be redone because it wasn't working. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Absolutely. Thank you. Great, Vijay. We have a question um, about how you approach. You know, there's there's almost two different categories of apps. You have your legacy apps that it's typically just a lift and shift with no real transformation, or maybe no 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 possible transformation for them in the cloud. And some apps that are, that are maybe more suitable for for that model. Is there a different approach you took for these, and and maybe talk a little bit about that, especially the data that comes with those apps as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so every time you're going on, you know, disrupting some businesses, you know, trying to transform, um, you know, there's going to be you know, various scenarios where you know your, your your applications are in multiple tiers. You know, critical applications, tier one applications, tier two, tier three, dev and QA. So we started off small. You know, we started with the dev and QA production or QA workloads. You know, we're creating some sandbox environments. You know, in Azure space. Um, letting the people, you know, test their environment, you know, the, the coders, the developers, the testers, and everybody, um, you know, test their applications. And then once they were comfortable, you know, we said, okay, now it's time to move the production workloads. Ideally, you know, the way we approached it was do an application assessment of their existing, you know, uh, uh, infrastructure, um, you know, type of infrastructure. Uh, potentially identifying um, what can be done 
you know, whether it's, yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's multiple companies, you know, the way they talk about it, six hours, eight hours, or something, which is, you know, re-hosting, re-platforming, refactoring, and so on and so forth. I mean, each one has its own candidate. Again, the, uh, the assessment helped us a lot to determine and advise the business customer as to how, whether they can come into public cloud as a brownfield or a greenfield. The goal was to make sure that we can modernize their application. That was our, you know, and bring in a lot of automation. That was our, you know, every, uh, the key to the approach was that, right? You know, always modernization. Think about app modernization, um, not just a lift and shift. But there are definitely certain applications that are, you know, legacy where they need to be stationed. And, he, and also uh, because of some other constraints like the licensing factors, you know, you know how these are currently being utilized, uh, the scale of uh, the databases that are out there, and then sometimes you, know, you can move the application, but the underlying databases and SQL you know, instances are still on-prem, right? You know, so there's, uh, there's a balance between that too. Um, so how we did it is, Definitely, you know, by doing an assessment of the applications, recommendations, you know, following some of the best guided principles that are laid out in front of us by, you know, even the cloud service providers, and looking at it from a risk standpoint, of, you know, whether the application is a tier one, tier two, or a tier three application in, in itself, right? You know, the tier one applications or the critical applications will take more time to come into the public cloud. Uh, if you're going to follow this path, but you know you can small, small, uh, start small and make this transformation uh, with uh, the, you know different use cases. I would say you know for different applications to raise. Great stuff, thanks, VJ. Uh, let's let's mm -hmm. get to the next topic, which I believe is top of mind for probably every, every industry and more so for you that you need to operate you know in the healthcare and the regulated industry. So, so some of the questions would be, how, how did you solve or get around some of the, the compliance and regulatory um, regulations and, and requirements that you need to conform to for your business? And, and how, did, how did you overcome some of these perceptions? You know, you've, you've heard for years that public cloud isn't secure or um, private cloud is much more secure than public cloud. Uh, will you lose control in IT? How would you govern this? Wouldn't it just be the Wild West when, it, when you move all this stuff to public cloud? Maybe talk a little bit about your security and governance approach and uh, meeting some of these compliance and regulatory needs that you have as a, as a healthcare organization. Yeah, as a healthcare organization, we have a lot of um, you know, secure data, um, highly confidential data uh, that we need to adhere to certain security and uh, regulatory compliances. Um, you know, from a standpoint of moving. So we had our own ch uh, set of challenges uh, from our security teams. Um, but we, you know, we worked through them. I mean, um, you know, we did not, at the end of the day, you know, uh, our, our rack space, you know, our minor service provider helped us to guide, um, you know, to map our security and risk controls to what they've done with the other customers. So if there was some education that needs to happen on our site. We rolled out a lot of training, you know, even to our security folks uh, from the standpoint of, uh, or at least I would say, uh, transforming the notion that, you know, cloud is not secure, right? Um, there's always that complexity where certain applications, as I mentioned previously, that, you know, they have to uh, come back and talk to the on-prem, you know, other applications or servers or databases um, where we could, you know, potentially have, you know, our own, you know, site to site or um, you know, dedicated uh, connections between between the sites. Um, so whether it's blocking the traffic or you know, you know how we need to ensure that the ports are certain port, only certain ports are open for that application to run. Um, everything external facing from our customer uh, or to the internet was our main concern, right? So we were able to um, expand a lot. Even our in internal in network infrastructure uh, added a lot of um, several security devices, you know, uh, from firewalls to Palo Altos and you know so on and so forth. Um, the, the state of the art uh, security devices as well, keeping the information uh, as much robust as possible within the four walls of the security. 
Um, so I think you know we're 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 in a position where our security teams now feel that cloud is safe. Uh, we've had our challenges, but we've been able to overcome that. Um, and I think you know we're on the right track here. So that's great. Yeah, actually, it's it's funny hearing a, a term like cloud is safe from someone in the mm -hmm. healthcare industry. So. Uh, I, I must say that's for for your first. Um, I'm hearing something like that publicly. It, it's good to see that perception is definitely shifting. We, we've seen it at Rackspace as well. Security has been the number one concern um, for many years previously, but that that concern is dropping over time as these perceptions are are going away. Um, so so good to see that. Uh, one thing you mentioned earlier in the, in the previous slide was that some of the data that you had to decide on keeping. Um, inside your, your data centers. Was there any security um, or potentially connectivity between Azure and your data centers? How did, how did you handle uh, the interchange of data between your apps and, and um, your data centers? We have um, you know, Express Routes um, that are provided by Microsoft, which are uh, dedicated uh, connections between their data centers and our data centers. And that's how it's handled. OK, so you had some of the lease lines. An express route mm -hmm. connectivity. Right. So let's let's talk a little bit about, about selecting the cloud. So you know, public cloud was your strategy. You overcame the challenges, and as you started to you know execute on the strategy, you landed on Azure as your first um, solution. Um, maybe talk a little about why why you went with that option and some of the um, decisions you had to make along the way, and um, also the end goal that you're, you're working towards as McKesson, is he thinking about public cloud as, a, as an overall piece of your IT environment? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a history with Microsoft. And, you know, we have our enterprise agreements with them. You know, they've been some great partners you know, over a period of time working with McKesson for multiple business units. Um, so I mean, yeah, there's a history to that. Uh, and, and they were always with us, um, you know, holding our hands in the beginning, um, you know, rolling out education, training, uh, you know, even even hands-on, you know, mostly, you know, with our developers and um, even our business partners uh, to help them with that journey to cloud. So it was a no-brainer for us. Um, we could, you know, we, we picked Microsoft and said, okay, let's go and. Uh, leverage the Azure functionality and services that are currently available and start from there and see. And having said that, uh, we are expanding to multiple cloud providers. We want to be cloud agnostic, uh, as a matter of fact. And there, you know, I mean, each cloud provider is different. Um, you know, each of them having its, you know, certain areas where they excel in. Um, so right now for what we were doing now in our cloud transformation, um, we thought Azure would best fit us, um, you know, in the in our relationship, with, with the way our relationship has been set, and even from a standpoint of uh, cost perspective, um, we wanted we wanted to start slow, roll it out, um, and scale it out. Uh, so uh, we we felt that Azure was our best uh, cloud provider to go with. Okay, great for that. Uh, thanks for that background. As you discussed earlier, um, you know, obviously Rackspace helped, but um, just as you were working on this execution of this plan, why why did you think about um, introducing an MSP into this process, and what did you what did you get out of this equation? And uh, maybe talk a little bit about what what working with Rackspace was like. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know uh, every time you you start on a cloud transformation. Uh, you want some guaranteed outcomes, right? You know, that's, <laughs> every business comes in and says, okay, I need this, you know, and, and they think it's, you know, it, it's done and dusted, you know, when you when you say you're moving to cloud. Uh, but we need a guidance, you know. Um, we, need, we also need, wanted to make sure that, you know, pay as you go building, you know, from our onboarding, from transformation you know, to onboarding to migration to upgrade and support services, uh, supporting the operating systems, the applications, the DBA. Uh, system services as well. You know, where we were leaning to look upon um, engaging with a true managed cloud, um, or, or someone who can come and take over our environment, look at our applications, 
assess our business needs, you know, where, you know, and then, you know, figure out uh, what our strategies are and create plans for us. So, um, so they, you know, based on the outcomes that we want to build on, you know, how we want to modernize and, you know, bring this whole new transformation, uh, we thought, you know, Rackspace, you know, was our ideal partner to take us on that uh, path. Um, so Rackspace, you know, helped us, you know, from a consultative approach, even before anything was signed on the contract, right? You know, they came in and they started looking at our environment and they said, hey, it's really, can, you know, help. Uh, they kind of educated everybody on, you know, how this can be, you know, um, fast-paced into a market, right? Um, and, and they, as I said, you know, the CapEx or the OpEx model. And some of the things that they talked about also aligned more or less to our operating model. You know, um, they understood our culture. They understood our internal challenges, right? Uh, they were able to come and do a gap analysis and, you know, help us educate everybody and manage the cost. So, um, and as we said, you know, Rackspace, is, along with the others, you know, they came into um, as being a potential MSP, you know, to help us in this cloud transformation. And I think, you know, they came out very, very successful with how they've uh, come up with the recommendation. Uh, today, as I said, you know, I treat, you know, we all treat Rackspace as an extension of our team. So that's a big thing for us. Um, you know, from a standpoint of being in front of the customer, you know, from day one, you know, they've been guiding them from an architectural standpoint. Uh, they are there to envision their application. They are there to uh, engage them in the customer onboarding process, you know, how they build and deploy their machine and support at, the, at, at every supporting level, right? Um, so they were, you know, no matter what skill set we needed from an application perspective or, you know, to help the customer, they were always there to build that uh, environment for the business unit. So there's a lot of sophistication, you know, that they brought in. There was a lot of value that they brought in, um, a lot of solutions that they implemented that are sustainable with hardly any impact to the customer. So um, I think, you know, Rackspace understood us more than any other partner in our journey to public cloud. So, and that's why we chose them as our MSP. I mean, you know, that's, I think, you know, I can say that confidently. <laughs> Thank you very uh, much, Vijay. Uh, Vijay. Go ahead, Marty. Yeah, I was just going to add that's a great, great feedback, Vijay. And I know you've been going through this journey and working with the Enterprise Technology Services team. But what has been some of the feedback from the business units and or what confidence has it given them to kind of continue to pursue uh, transformation onto the cloud from the business unit perspective? Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely, Marty. Um, so I mean, every now and then, you know, I have the, the weekly checkpoints with my business units as to how, you know, they're engaging Rackspace or Rackspace is engaging them, uh, whether it's even before we migrate or post-migration, right? And, you know, this is where I think, you know, I have to give the credit to Rackspace is they care about our business partners and our application owners as much as they care about themselves. So that's a great thing. Um, there have been a lot of successful stories, you know, where Rackspace will come in. I mean, even though, you know, some of the services we've not partnered with them as part of an agreement, they don't, they don't come and look at it as, oh, no, it's not our area, right? You know, they come and, you know, they work with the customer. They even, you know, help the customer fix some of the issues they are having on the application side by coming in and helping them and, you know, making sure that, you know, you know back to operations again. So, so, I mean, they are, I mean, not only Rackspace is doing a great job, it's managing our journey, you know, the overall journey, I mean, to, uh, to our cloud, but they're also managing our clients as well, as much as we want to manage them or, or they want to manage themselves, right? So I, I think, you know, I give, but there's a lot of customers who give positive feedback coming in and say, oh, it's great to work with Rackspace, you know, they're always there, you know, thankfully. So um, we have, and again, as I said, I'm going to repeat this again is, we see them as an extension of our team. So we don't treat them as our vendor or our managed service provider. So. 
Great feedback. Great. Thank you, you yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, just for the folks on the webinar, this you know these are services that we do provide you know on on various clouds um, as part of our multi-cloud strategy with uh, AWS, Google, and Azure. So, would love to um, work with you on that as well. Um, now, VJ, look into the future as as you go through this journey and and you start implementation. And, and I'm sure there's, there's still a lot of work to be done, but what are some of the considerations you have if, you, if you're thinking about the next you know, 12 to 18 months out for McKesson IT? Yeah, McKesson has a vision. Um, and our vision is to, you know, kind of from a business perspective, is you know, we want to get into the retail as much as possible. Um, and, you know, because of the competitive nature of the market, how it is, uh, and then based on that, we'll be building our future models for critical systems, you know, that are currently deciding, you know, some of our ERP platforms, whether it's ERP, whether it's Salesforce or, you know, SAP, um, you know, things and so on and so forth. Um, I believe, you know, Rackspace at this point is, is heavily into enterprise applications um, as we speak, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, so we, we, we're planning to leverage them for, you know, those kind of, uh, you know, um, business applications, whether it's uh, Azure Apps or SAP or Oracle. Um, another thing that McKesson is looking forward to is, you know, everything we want to do is not infrastructure as a service, but, you know, as a platform, as a think platform, right? Um, whether it's engaging with other platform, you know, partners like, you know, Docker or PCF or, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, where we want to kind of, you know, as I said, you know, we want to look ourselves as a technology company, do everything in the way that technology companies should be doing, bringing a lot of, you know, microservices, uh, container services, and things and so on and so forth, um, basically leveraging the, the full extent of cloud capabilities rather than saying, hey, you know, it's only at the OS level, but rather than at the service level, right? So. Um, this is where we're looking into uh, from a future perspective how we want to be in known and transforming our business application. That's called modernization as well. So here's where, you know, um, uh, Rackspace, I think, you know, they're also a uh, leader in that stack at this point uh, from bringing all this functionality that we are looking to and also we're, you know, we're we want to be in the upcoming years. So I think, you know, uh, our partnership is good. Uh, we will be successful together. Um, all critical systems, you know, currently our systems run in the SAP infrastructure with Rackspace um, coming into the market as, uh, as an ERP leader in that, you know, is also helpful for us. Passing container strategy, as I said, that's going to be helpful. They're, you know, they're constantly with us, uh, educating us on um, what their capabilities are to extend uh, their partnership with us as well. Great, thanks. And and you know, as as we've been working with many accounts here at Rackspace on Azure, we've we've definitely seen a a big shift. You know, first from IaaS. Uh, a lot of our initial accounts, you know, when we launched this in 2015, was was very much focused on you know compute, network, storage, and uh, we've seen a, a huge influx of, of customers trying to leverage the Azure platform as a service in you know, things like Redis Cache, Cosmos DB, um, mm -hmm. and lately we're definitely seeing you know a lot more interest in in containers as well, um, Azure Kubernetes services, and and even just ACS or Azure Container Services on Azure. So these these are some services that we're also seeing a, a pretty big jump in interest and demand from our from our accounts from small to large. So we're, we're definitely seeing this um, this transformation in industry as as people are trying to move away from just pure VMs and really leveraging the the power that the cloud can give them. So I believe that uh, gets us to our Q and A session. Um, Thanks, VJ, for uh, covering that, that journey. That was a really interesting story for us and, and sure for everyone on the line here. So let's, let's dive into some of the, the questions we got through the webinar. Um, I have here from, from Jonathan Nations. This is one asked a little earlier when we were talking about your, your data and your applications in the cloud. So his question really is around how do we back up this data um, especially the data in the cloud? And, and Marty, you probably have some experience as well working with McKesson on, on that. 
Yeah. Marty, uh, you want to take that? Or? Yeah, I can take it from just a high level. I think not only uh, data backup, but also the whole genre of like disaster recovery. There's a few live questions that came in around you know, backing up data and or disaster recovery. And uh, basically what's done at some of the tactical and technical levels with McKesson team is designs are put in place based on the application prof profile and risk profile. And so this designed into the Azure fabric, if you will, whether it's you know kind of a high availability or um, backing up the the data from the individual elements into the Azure cloud, and it's all kind of based on what the disaster recovery plan is for those or the backup um, schema that's needed for the data. So much like a private cloud or your own data center, um, for those asking, it's backed up in roughly the same way. So it's available in time of not only um, data res restoration, but also in the event of a disaster. Yeah, Vijay, I want to add maybe a little bit of, of the technical detail underneath that or, or how you see Azure playing into your DR strategy or your backup of your data. Yeah, um, so I, I think there's a couple of ways you can, you know, look at it. I mean, everything, you know, we're doing it in Azure space. You know, we have a DR plan, you know, which is uh, just part of the service that we've signed up for. Um, yeah, it's thoroughly implemented, it's tested, um, and you know, we've, we've done even backups and restores, you know, go alongside. There's RTOs, RPOs, you know, that are tied to that. Um, you know, pretty robust and sophisticated. Um, and, and again, even internally, the way we do is, you know, from some of our critical applications, you know, we have uh, data replications going into our, you know, our own data, uh, say, uh, secondary data centers too, you know, right? So we have an on-prem uh, that's actually constantly, you know, backing up or storing the data um, uh, to an off-prem site too. We also partnered with, uh, you know, third parties, you know, where our data is also, again, uh, go to an IBM, you know, center where, you know, um, these uh, reports are set and continuously be backed. Um, as you know, as probably some of the folks in the call may be familiar, we also utilize uh, the AutoVault solution, which is the online backup, um, cloud backup solution as well uh, for some of our critical applications. Great stuff. Marty, you said you had a question as well that came yeah. in that you want to ask. Yeah, I had another live question that came in when you were talking about a, a executive alignment and uh, leadership and, and how they were on board from a top-down perspective. One of the questions was, um, what were some of the more common or standard kind of questions that came from the BU leaders when they were considering moving to the public cloud? It was it like a common theme. Was it security or resources or just how to do the next steps? Uh, the question was about, you know, those BUs and how they, um, what some of the concerns they may have. Yeah, I think the most important thing, Marty, was, you know, um, how can you assure, you know, when you're talking about infrastructure modernization, right, uh, the efficiency, resiliency, and the agility were the key factors. And uh, added to that was the operational automation, um, you know, to spread that across the enterprise apps and operations, you know. And then the third factor I would throw in is obviously, you know, how can you save time and money, you know, you know that's you know, one thing is, you know, via automation. Um, so these were some of the, you know, big, you know, big uh, I would say, KPIs you know, for leadership or at least uh, the factors that they were looking for. Um, the operations, resiliency, and, you know, uh, reliability and stability, of, you know, how can we bring that? Excellent. Thanks. Thanks for that one, Marty. Um, so looking at uh, your infrastructure you currently host in, in various platforms, um, Vijay, how, how, how far along do you think you are right now? And, and do you think you want to get to 100% in the cloud, or is there an optimal mix that you're, you're aiming for? Yeah, we, we cannot be 100%. I mean, I, I don't know if any company can be 100% when they start. I, I think you want to be there, uh, but we have some of our uh, applications, um, I would say, you know, pretty traditional uh, applications that we still run on AIX platforms and so on and so forth. Uh, some of them run on physical servers as well. 
those probably would remain at least until a certain period of time um, on our private cloud. But if we can get to about, I would say, you know, perhaps 80-20, 80, 80 being in favor of public cloud, uh, I think you know we can call ourselves as a, a completely cloud-first organization uh, from our stand from our standpoint. Great stuff. Thank you, VJ. So we're we're at the top of the hour now. Um, if if there are any questions, I don't see any more coming into the chat window. So I believe it's time to wrap up. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Um, we also have a good case study for you to go through um, that was been written on McKesson's uh, story of transformation. You can find that at uh, raxus.com, customer stories slash McKesson. Um, also, if you'd like to hear more about our, our multi-cloud strategy and how we are helping customers across uh, Azure, AWS, Google, and, and host environments here at Rackspace in private cloud or dedicated servers, please hit up rackspace.com and you'll be able to find all the information you need. Um, at this time, I'd like to just, again, thank you very much. Um, and thank you to VJ for, for joining us today and, and helping us tell the story. And, and for all the time you put in here, VJ, we really appreciate that and, and the effort you've, you gave us here. Thank you very much, everybody.